Crossing Thresholds is an international volunteer development organization that works primarily in Africa, building schools, feeding children. They currently feed over 1,500 children a day in the slums of Kibera. The board elected to expand their mission to the Western Hemisphere and brought me on to investigate opportunities here in Puerto Rico. Hi, I'm Rusty Peterson and I'm the project director for Crossing Thresholds in Puerto Rico. My name's KJ. Pretty much technically a volunteer. Um, several of us do that and my main focus is in, is in agriculture. I ended up on the island about a year before Maria. Uh, I broke my back and my doctor told me I had to find some new way to make a living and living in Puerto Rico was cheaper. It gave me an opportunity to kind of figure out where I was going to go next. My friend Gary Cohen introduced me to Arachma and uh, the community of Mariana. Thought it would be a good fit for an expanding Crossing Thresholds mission from Africa to the Western Hemisphere. One of my hopes was in creating a partnership between Crossing Thresholds and Arachma was to create a model that other North American NGOs could follow in order to help other communities in Puerto Rico benefit from the generosity of North Americans who want to work in Puerto Rico. I happened to not be on the island when Maria hit and uh, I was in Denver. When I was going to come back I figured I wanted to bring some people with me that would be willing to help uh, help repair the damage. And so we, I came back with a group of five other people, there were six of us, and we just started canvassing the neighborhoods, going around asking the municipalities or Red Cross or FEMA or anybody who was around if we could help them. And we had to keep going further and further because there was so much help on the island already. We got onto a uh, conference call with New York City and some people from LA and Chicago. And one of the people from Arecma, the group here, Mariana, was a sister of uh, that man, and she said, you need to go up to Mariana in Umacao and talk to the people there. There's a great organization, and as soon as we showed up here, we knew this is what we wanted to be a part of. I've been working in Puerto Rico since November of 2018, and the arrangement and the, and the proposal I put together between Crossing Thresholds and Arachma is done on a monthly basis and is renewed on a monthly basis. So both organizations can decide if they're interested in continuing the relationship. It keeps both organizations on their toes and certainly committed to the mission. The partnership between Arekma and Crescent Trust Hall has been a blessing. Um, uh, we couldn't be doing all of this without the help and collaboration with Crescent Trust Hall. Um, Crush and Trace Hall not only has brought to us uh, volunteers, but they also uh, sponsor um, some of the projects that, that we have. This relationship of our recommend Crush and Trace Hall start on, well, we start talking about in February 2018, but was official on December, November, December 2018. And the first group that they brought was on January uh, this year. When Hurricane Mary hits, I was in my house. I live downtown Umacao uh, with my grandparents. It's an urbanization. It's basically house by house next to it. So I spend the hurricane over there. I first heard about Hurricane Maria on the news. And uh, one thing that struck, I think, a lot of us about that that summer was it was disaster after disaster after disaster. There were at least three big hurricanes. And in a sense, I think at times that as bad as things were in Puerto Rico, that we sort of got numb to the level of disaster everywhere. Houston was flooded and then there were a few other things and then this, and it's a little bit overwhelming, honestly. The house was okay after the hurricane. Basically, the structure is really um, strong. That house is over 50 years old. It's all concrete. The windows were other things. Um, sadly, we lost all the windows from the front of the house, or part of them, because of the wind. And because we didn't have anything to stop that, we had to use my bed my furniture from my bedroom, my mattress, the panels that goes below the mattress just to hold the, the wings of coming in 
from the window. Everything was falling down. Houses were just breaking and flying everywhere. Full houses, not just trees, not trash cans. They was everything, cars, trees, everything was gone. One thing that people should know about this place is um, how resilient all of the people are here and everyone we've met, you know, despite all they've gone through, and it's not just the hurricane, it's really economic hardship um, and, you know, other things that they really um, are so focused on making, you know, making the lives of the people here better. And it's a really great thing to see. And I feel like if you try to help the people here, um, that, that you know, it will, it will not go unnoticed and that they'll really use whatever resources any of us have to help build a better future for their, uh, for their island. There are lots of ways to get involved in international nonprofits who sponsor volunteer trips. Certainly one way is to come on a trip, but the other one is to look at their mission and decide if it aligns with what you think is important in this world. Certainly, Puerto Rico is in the hearts and minds of many North Americans which is why I elected to come here a year ago. Having that reminder that there are Americans and there are Europeans and there are Africans and Chinese and people from all over the world coming to help, it reminds us that we're not alone. We have this feeling of solidarity and it, it brings a lot of strength to the people here. It's, it's great to have that international connection.